So Anna, now we're running. Uh, so people that want to watch you and me do a podcast can go yeah. right over to YouTube and this show yeah. will be there. That's right. Um, yeah, you know, I was on to this guy early, early and often. Um, we talked about this <laughs> just a few weeks ago on this very podcast, right, Anna? We, we, I don't think I'm saying right, Anna. I don't think Anna knows who I'm talking about. Because well, we, I do because you mentioned his name, so I'm assuming you're talking about the dude that you said you might bring up, but then you just did. Are we talking yeah. about Circle? Yeah, we're talking about Circle. Okay. And people have been, you know, for the people who are new to the show, I call Sanjay Gupta Circle because he's a guy that just runs around in circles and never fucking gets anywhere. He's just one big circle. And, you know, as one time, at one point, in this podcast history within the 10 years, he was trying to become the Surgeon General under the Obama administration, I think it was. And we've been through administration. Hey, he was he was the Surgeon General, wasn't he? No, no, he was up for it, but he had some controversy around him or something. Like he's, he, you know, Sanjay Gupta is just a guy that will climb on dead people's backs just to be higher than everyone else. That's the kind of person he is. Uh, I've, I've never been a fan. I, I was early money on this guy. Anna, it, please chime in. I back you up chime a thousand in. percent. And also the CNN is on in our house. And when it's on, it's Sanjay Gupta is always there. We, Lauren and I believe that he sleeps under one of the desks because he's always there ready to give his thoughts. Um, as you know, I don't watch CNN. I don't watch MSNBC. I don't watch Fox News. Let me be clear. I don't watch any of them either. So do the math. OK, so as Anna will tell you, I remember um, I was at someone's house. I won't say who. And uh, CNN was on blaring and bla just blaring minutia. Right. Yeah, that's all they do. And I said, I I'm sorry. I know this is not my house. I'm a guest. W would you please kindly turn that the fuck off? <laughs> And they went, oh, yeah, no problem. They didn't turn the television off. They, they turned it, it to another news. They turned it to Fox. <laughs> and I said, um, I, I hate to, you know, you, you just did me a favor by turning that minutia off, that, that babble. Now you have this crap on. And it's like, oh, I, I thought you just wanted the other. It's like, oh, so you admit that there are two sides. Right, that we're going to lie on this end over here at CNN, and then over here on Fox, we're going to lie over here. Right? I, what you have to understand is, I don't like any of it. Any oh, of it. Honey, just paper. cue the cards and letters right now. Are you ready to receive all the cards and letters? Please, folks. I don't They're going to be like, lie. whoever, which side is it? Like, they don't lie. They don't lie. Yeah, of course. Mm -hmm. But they both sides are, are all horrible. horrible. They're all horrible. I hate politics. OK, yeah. you Same. need if you're listening to this show, you need to understand that first and foremost, that I hate politics. I don't play politics. I never tell anyone who I'm voting for. I never talk about it. And people think they know my politics. That, that's the part that kills me. Some people go, hey, Vin, you're on the right. You have to be on the right. You you, you shoot guns. OK, how like does nobody that, on the nobody on the left shoots guns? That's that's identity. They say politics, that. I get it right there. Right. right, uh, right. Hey, then you you must be on the left because you, you know, your your partner, your not my partner in life. She happens to be a woman, but your business partner, and he's gay. You're friends with gay. So you're on the left. Obviously, I don't I don't give a fuck. Yeah, I shoot guns and I have I, I, I have great. My best friend's gay. I don't care. My friend, one of my best friends growing up was black. What does that make me to the left? Or does that make me do what? I, I don't know where black people. I don't even know where black people are. Right? <laughs> black people, tell us where you are. Black people, I need to know where you are politically. You know, no, please don't. No, don't we're just kidding. I don't want to know where anyone is politically. No, I don't give a fuck. Yeah, right? I agree. And by the way, Vinny, would you agree with this statement? Go on. The goal of this podcast is to empower and inform the people so that they can make the changes in their own lives. 
because yeah. people will write and say, well, we need to change this system or change the law. And I'm like, that's fine. If y'all want to take that yoke on, great. We're doing it. We're approaching it from a different angle here, which is individual self-empowerment, education, and hopefully we make you giggle along the way. I don't know. Yeah, yeah no, we try to keep it light and airy. And, and by the way, my, my good friend, Nina Teichels, she started the Nutrition Coalition. She's trying to help affect change through policy. Great. So is, go and support that. Because Winnie and I are not policy wonks. Right. We are not going to write legislation. Exactly. My That's entire family all. worked on Capitol Hill in, in politics, and I am the black sheep. That's what politics put it mildly. Means. Politics means you're someone who is going to go in and, and work and try to change or create policy. Right. I'm not that guy. I'm just trying to help you change and, and create what you want to be health wise. And I think if I just do that and stay apolitical, because I'm apolitical to begin with. And, um, you know, th that's who I am. That's who I am. I feel like for me, people, people uh, have given us feedback about being apolitical. Or if you say something slightly right or slightly left, like, oh, I see, I knew it, I knew it. And it's like, no, no, no. <laughs> We're for common sense. Right. Okay. Yeah. Common sense when it comes to food, common sense when it comes to making choices, common sense to you guys knowing and being educated on stuff, right? And I think that if we can help folks sift through the BS and make some decisions that work for them and their families, and they can get off of uh, some meds or off of the, the, the diet mentality train or get their family healthy. <gasps> I met a woman today, Vinny, whose daughter oh, look at Anna has doing the kind of thing. She, as you. Just, she is just going on and on. I am and but, but, running amok. And I'm just, but it was really amok. nice to be out in public. And, and I, I got a, I got a new coat because I'm going to New York. And this woman, her daughter, had the same kind of leukemia that you had. Harry Yes. And she's doing great. The daughter is good. She's been clean for a year. And that, and the thing is that we got to talking and she was at St. Jude's and they did a great job with her daughter. And they said her daughter, as we would say from where I'm from, yeah. and um, her daughter drinks water. Uh, she said, the oncologist said, don't eat sugar. It's poison, especially feeds the cancer. And I was like, oh, good. The word is finally getting out. Yeah. Back when uh, I talked to my idea. doctor about it, nobody, they were I like, oh, if... go drink some green juice and go have some, <laughs> like start juicing some grass and you know, sugar. Like, yeah. Yeah. I'm like, I'm not doing that. I'm going to eat some steak. Um, Anna, so I want to go. I bet I bet Circle doesn't say don't eat sugar because then his sponsors wouldn't be very happy. Right. So let's get back to Sanjay Gupta. And again, folks, this is not political. Anna, is it OK if I, I don't know how this works? Can I play Joe Rogan, a, a clip from Joe Rogan's podcast on my podcast? I, being is that I'm not a copyright or trademark attorney, I don't have the answer to that. Well, this is we're going to if you're, you're going to yeah, play it as news and give commentary, perhaps. Yeah, this is news. Why not? This is commentary. I will stop along the way because I, I want to make a few points along the way. <clears throat> um, someone sent this to me on on the Twitters and I listened to it and I went, man, this guy Sanjay Gupta talks out of both ends of his ass. And I, I don't know how he wakes up in the morning and looks in the mirror. I, I just, I, I'm sorry. I, I don't have any love for this guy. And by the way, I don't care if he was on Fox, I'd feel the same way. I, I just, you guys need to understand, this is not about politics. This is not about CNN, but they talk about CNN and his network. And here we go. We're going to play a little bit of it here. There I, are no I, edges to this circle. Let's put it that way. Yeah, th this circle is round and smooth. <laughs> Just like Anna's beautiful. Never mind. Here we go. I almost almost went there. Just like Sanjay's book. Never mind. Take it easy. Ahead of his. Never mind. Here we go. Taking human drugs versus drugs for it, veterinary. It's calling it a horse dewormer is not a flattering thing. I get it's that. It's a lie. It's a lie. Let, let me. Uh, I, I don't Hold on. Me. Wait. Who's talking and what are they saying? Okay. That was a Rogan, lot of information. I'm going to go back. I'm going to go back. I'm going to go back. Rogan. Add the clip a little more. Uh, Rogan uh, is talking first. And basically, 
Joe Rogan had COVID. Let, let, you, you know, I need, I, I'm, I'm assuming the whole world knew this. Joe Ro Rogan had COVID. He I did know that. He was non-vaccinated. Right. And he took a bunch of different medications, all prescribed to him by a doctor, okay. a medical physician. Right. And um, one, of the, one of the cocktails in his drug was ivermectin. Ivermectin won a Nobel Prize back in 2015, I think it was, and you might want to fact check that. But I think it won the Nobel Prize for being a drug that was just saving, you know, if you get malaria, if you go to other countries, it's kind of like hydroxychloroquine, the other drug that had problems with COVID. Like when, when I went to India a few years ago, one of the drugs they give you, they shoot in you before you leave, mm -hmm. is hydroxychloroquine. It's been around since the 1950s. And that's an anti-malaria? It's, yeah, if you get malaria, this will help you live, right, while you're in a third world country. And ivermectin is the same sort of drug. It's been handed out, not millions, but billions of times over the years, since 2015, Nobel Prize winning drug for human consumption. Hear me again, human consumption. And uh, I've had horses in the past, you your daughter rode horses for mm -hmm. years. Mm -hmm. You've had horses. I live in horse country. Horses and animals, a lot of times use the same drugs humans use, yes. except it comes in a different form, right? Ivermectin yeah. for humans come in a pill, but for a horse, it, you know, you, you don't just hand a horse a pill. You might put it in a paste and then you just shove that paste. You, you, you get their mouth open and you shove that paste right behind their, the, the last tooth. So they have they, to swallow it. They have to swallow it. Well, and let me say at SY well, Feed, where we get Izzy's food, they have all those guns, the little the yeah, slurry the, guns they, of ivermectin, yeah, and yeah. they put uh, ropes around it. <laughs> and they said because the horses aren't be able to get their treatment because there's been a run on it by the people. Just saying. <laughs> Yeah. Um, who, who may, I don't know if they're sick or not, but there's been a run on it and they've had to protect it because the horses need the horse variation of it. Right. And by the way, I don't know, and this is not a suggestion, folks. I would never tell anyone to take a horse medication, but ivermectin is in pill form and a doctor can prescribe it and uh, you can take this stuff safely. Now, whether it cures COVID, I don't know. Well, I think, isn't that the issue? You want people to take it safely. And so if you're going to buy the horse paste and shoving it down your throat, like you're that's a two-ton animal. That, that's just that's stupid. Dumb. Yeah. You know? um, so, uh, I, you know, ivermectin can be used safely. I don't know if it helps COVID. I don't know if it hurts COVID. I don't know. But um, um, uh, Joe Rogan took it along with these, you know, other antibodies and all this stuff. And he had literally one day of COVID or something like that. They talk about it here, but CNN didn't report it that way. They went, you know, Joe Rogan, they, they got snarky about it. Mr. I don't want to vax got COVID and he took horse paste. They literally do it. And then now he's asking this guy, Circle Gupta, about it. And he's saying, you're your people lied. And it's funny to watch Gupta try to squirm. You've never, you haven't seen it, right, Anna? No. All right, so that's the setup. And we're going to, the first person you're going to hear when I plunk this down again is Joe Rogan okay. <clears throat> saying, hey, why did CNN lie? And the other person in the room is, you know, Sanjay Gupta. Here goes at your network about people taking human drugs versus drugs from it, veterinary it, calling it a horse dewormer is not a flattering thing i get it's that it's a lie it's a lie on a news network it, and it's it, a lie that's a willing that's that's a lie that they're conscious of it's not a mistake yeah they're unfavorably framing it as veterinary medicine well the fda put this thing out you saw that did you see that thing that the fda put out what did the FDA put out? <laughs> it was a tweet, and it was snarky. I admit it. They said, you are not a horse, you are not a cow. Stop taking this stuff or something like Why that. Why would you say that when you're talking about a drug that's been given out to billions and billions of people, a drug that was responsible for one of the inventors of it making the Nobel the, Prize. Winning, the Nobel Prize in 2015. 15, yeah. Yeah, no, a, a drug well, that has been shown to stop viral replication in vitro. 
You know that, right? I, I, Why would they lie and say that's horse dewormer? I can afford people medicine, motherfucker. <laughs> this is ridiculous. It's just a lie. I don't think anyone is thick. But don't you think that a lie like that is dangerous on a news network when you know that they know they're lying? You know that they know that I took medicine. Like, here it is. This is ivermectin. You got this it with it right you. here. Somebody gave it to me. All right, hang on. I, I, do do you, th the thing is, we're, we're we're like going so fast. Like I feel like I'm missing. I'm missing. Do you think I want that that's to, a problem that your news network it was not, lies? Well, I don't. I don't Dude, I mean, what did they say? They lied. lied. What did they said say? I was taking horse dewormer. First of all, it was prescribed to me. First off. Sanjay Gupta is pretending, oh, well, I don't know, what did they say? What, well, I, don't, I don't know, I don't know. Do you think Sanjay Gupta knows nothing about this? Why would Sanjay Gupta go on the show? He had to have known that Joe Rogan was going to rake him over the coals. Well, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Joe Rogan's going to- so Was CNN like, like well, him. you know what? Sanjay will literally do anything. He lives under the desk at CNN. Let's just throw him to the Joe Rogan wolves and have him handle the, the heat from all this. Yeah, because, you know- he, Sanjay's like, okay, I'm well, a company well, man, I'll do it. Well, the one let, let me give let me give Sanjay Gupta some credit. Okay. He's the one guy that's hard to beat up because he just keeps retreating. <laughs> it's, it's like it's hard to beat up. It's hard to go this way. I don't know what CNN did. Why? Extra. I don't know. I've never heard. Wait, mm -hmm. there's a place called CNN. I don't know. And and well, what they wait, uh, are you saying oh, that I work at CNN and my boss at CNN they said that? What's mad? Paste? I mean, but, but, but no, what? You know, he's literally doing that, and Rogan has to keep going in. Rogan is no. See, this is why it's so stupid. Why can't he just say they shouldn't have said that? Sorry, they did that. And the reason why they're doing it is because people, humans are abusing it who aren't even sick. Well, the first so, thing he does. He'd be done, is, and it wouldn't be a whole thing. The first thing he does is he doesn't throw CNN under the bus. He throws the FDA under the bus because Rogan brings up the FDA. They wrote a snarky tweet. Yeah, they, you know, and, and so Sanjay goes, okay, okay, the FDA shouldn't have done that snarky. I mean, you're right. But he's still going, I got to get that fucking paycheck. I got to get that pay. You know, he, he's, not, he's not letting go of it. So let's, would, Anna, would you like to continue on? I guess we're going to. <laughs> I mean, look, if you don't want to, we can move on and start doing fake diets or whatever. I have plenty of those. Yeah. All right. I have questions about zone two. And we can do that too, but I'm enjoying this. Would you like to enjoy this? Sure. I Go I ahead. I, I love nothing more than to cringe at everything Sanjay Gupta says. I, I wish. By the way, I don't even listen to Joe Rogan. I don't know. I knew he had COVID because it was in the news because I guess that's news when people get sick or whatever. But like, yeah. I read the news about like, you know, the housewives, like somebody's yeah. getting arrested for fraud. That's. That's what I read. That's my news. Look, if I get to listen to any podcast, it's well on the weekends. It's kind of like you know, I'll listen to um uh, um uh, what's his name, Mike Mike Rowe. I love his. Yeah, podcast. I love his one. Yeah, he's great. Um, I will listen to Gina's podcast because they do a podcast about podcast. Right. And right. It's, it's fun to listen to. And I should listen to that one. I would probably like that one. Once a week, I make it a point to listen to Corolla because I'm part of that show. Yeah, you usually, need to know what they're doing. Usually I'll listen when someone tweets at me, hey, they mentioned your name today. And I'm like, oh boy, you know, what are they mean? So <laughs> you got I'll, that'll be the one I'll I'll listen to. Um, sometimes Gino will write to me and go, hey, we were talking about you on the show today, and I'll listen the next day, right? To see, or Chris Laxamana will call me for a comment. And you know, I need to, you know, that kind of thing. That's all I have time for. Right. I don't have time for three hours of Rogan. If I had time for three hours of Rogan, I got time to start a whole new career. Right. It's a three hour show. That's what, yeah. I'm told it's a three hour show. I have a five minute okay. clip here. But at any rate, <clears throat> let, okay. shall we move on a bit and see where this heads? Because yeah. Andre Gupta is retreating and he's doing, blah, 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 blah. I didn't hear anything. But let's see where it goes to me by a doctor yeah, yeah, yeah. along they with shouldn't have said a it was a bunch worse. of if, other if medications was, if you got a human pill because there were people that were taking it the veterinary medication and i you're not obviously you got it from a doctor so that it shouldn't be called that ivermectin can be a very effective medication for parasitic disease and as you say it's probably you know i think what a quarter billion people have taken it around the world more, i get that way more so way what, more hang on anna you, i want to jump in there 
Sanjay Gupta is a smart man. He wanted to be Surgeon General. He knows that billions and billions of people have taken this drug. Literally, it's, okay. it's in the billions, right? And he's like, about, I don't know, like a quarter of a billion? Like, I'm not, I'm not, did five people have it? I'm not, I'm not, he knows the truth. He knows the truth. Can I ask a dumb question? Because I've never heard of ivermectin before this. Me, me either. Me either. I've never I'd never heard of it for horses. I had never heard of it for humans. Is it is it like a typhoid Mary sort of situation? A malaria, yellow fever, typhoid, cholera situation? Is that what for parasitic yeah, I, I, stuff? I, I, from all I know, water? What is all it? I, Anna, while we're listening to this, you in our position of privilege here in the United States, meaning we have clean water to drink, we right. wouldn't come into contact okay, with. Do that. me a favor. Is that why I don't know it? Okay, Anna, listen. Yeah. While I'm playing, I'll this, Google please, it. Google it, because my only understanding from my doctor, because I was talking to my doctor, and she was like, "Do you have the shots?" I said, "Yeah, I have both shots." You know, and the whole thing. Yeah. Um, that doesn't mean I'm a vaxxer or an anti-vaxxer or whatever. I, for me. I wanted the shots. I travel a lot. I wanted the shots. I, I took them. I, I was I wasn't worried you about defend yourself for getting the shots. Anna, I wasn't so much worried about dying because I'm a healthy 59 year old man who rides the fuck out of a bike and, and do everything every day. I didn't want that long haulers, whatever that is, because oh, me too. Doctor, I don't want to lose my sense of smell and taste. That's what I do for a living. Right? Recipes. I'm okay with losing senses for 10 days. My friend, Dr. X, who used to come on this show, who runs a hospital in Los Angeles, one of the biggest hospitals in this country. I said, X, what is the truth? Uh, should we explain who Dr. X is? Oh, well, well let's explain it after because uh, after. her segment was one of my all time favorite segments. She's, a, she's a real doctor. Yeah. She would come on this show from time to time. She's a close friend of Serena and me. We're, we're like she comes and stays at the house and the whole thing. And, and we've traveled when we moved here, she road tripped with Serena across the country. That's how close we are to this doctor. She's a hospital. She runs a hospital in Los Angeles. And the whole time the COVID thing was like, hey, X, we call her Dr. X because she doesn't want her real name to come out because she's Don't blame her. It was, you know, and no, it's, it's not Dr. Drew. Dr. X is actually bigger than Dr. Drew in the hospital world. And I said, X, if you were me, would you take this medication? And she said, yes. And I said, okay, why? Why should I take a, a, an unproven, I got to sign something that says, I know that this has not been, blah, blah, blah. she goes, Vinny, I'm not worried about you or Serena dying. But for some people who get this, and they don't even get that sick. They get long haulers and their lungs are like leather. And we don't Ooh, know. We don't, we don't know, want that. We don't know if, is that, if they're ever going to come back. And I was just watching something. I watched uh, real sports the other day. They took real athletes, college athletes, young women who had COVID, who got through it like in a few days and felt And then all of a sudden they have long haulers. They yeah. can't even walk down the block. There was a pro basketball player, female basketball player, can't get out of bed. She, when she goes to the grocery store, she considers that a win. And yeah. this woman was a star in the WNBA. I'm worried about that and my yeah, job and my career and talking on this mic um, and doing everything hello. I do. So uh, that's, that's why, for me, that's why it was the right decision. Right. To take a chance on that drug versus taking a chance on losing my livelihood and my life because I wouldn't be able to work, I wouldn't be able to make money, and it, it would all be gone. And I can't do that to Serena. We both decided to take the shot. And if that was the wrong decision, we will find out at some point. By the way, all of my brothers took it, and my sister-in-laws and my parents. So as a family, I'm, a, I'm part of a family. That's why I did it. Okay. Here's the other. I feel so, like you don't have to explain yourself. No, but I just I wanted to. I don't have to explain anything, but that's why I did it. That's why it was right for me. I I I was first in line the moment they opened it up. Give me give me that shot. Yeah, and and, and by the way, by the way, you know I know a lot of people that didn't, and I'm fine with that. I, I don't go. Oh yeah, 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 you're killing other people. Fine, I don't care. You want long haulers? You want this? And that. Go, go, fine, fine. I, I hope it doesn't happen to you. I hope it doesn't happen. I don't want to see ill will for anyone. 
but to lie about a drug that may help. Now, Anna, did you, you might have pulled it up, but I want to. I listen. did. It looks like it's for subtropical stuff, diseases. Right, hang on, it's, hang on to that. Yeah. Let's listen to a little bit more. And then we're okay. going to study this drug for a second because I, I want you to continue hearing what's going on here. Okay. Billions of people have taken it. Can I just come back to the one I want to talk about? I, two, no, 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 two, no, no, two no, things no. on you the ledger. To, you have, before we get to that, does it bother you that the news network you work for out and out lied, well, just outright lied about me taking horse dewormer? They, they, they shouldn't have said that. Why did they do that? I don't know. You didn't ask? I you didn't think that was did, your, you're the medical guy over there. I didn't ask. I should have asked before coming But they coming did it with podcast. such glee. No, yes, Joe. Yes, did. I watched. They, you I watched. watched. I watched. You watched. No, I don't think there's. Yes, a they did. I don't. I. No one takes. <laughs> Joe Rogan says he has COVID. Taking, taking livestock drug, despite warnings. Okay, now what's getting ready to happen here is, you know, Sanjay is sitting there going, "No, they didn't. Come on, Joe. They didn't do that." And the whole thing. Well, now Joe has pulled up the clip from CNN, and they have one of their talking heads who's going to talk about gleefully talk about Joe taking a horse dewormer. Okay, so now Joe has pulled this up, he has it up and all of a sudden Gupta is going, Oh, no, oh, no, I'm, I'm getting ready to get my goose cooked even. More. <laughs> right. Here goes. Yeah, Jamie had to pull this up. You want to huh? play it? Does she does she this is your news network? I'm gonna watch. Let's see. I'm gonna watch. Rogan telling his 13 million Instagram followers that he was treated with several drugs and he included ivermectin on the list, a drug used for livestock. The FDA and the CDC warn against using to treat COVID. Okay. He didn't, he never took a livestock drug, stock drug. That's a lie. This is on CNN. <clears throat> That's a complete lie. Right? They, they just, and then they, they switched it by saying, you know, the CDC and the FDA says, you know, this is not, yeah, of course, the FDA and the CDC is going to say don't take a fucking horse amount of any drug. Right. You know that, CNN. You know that's a lie. And you know Joe Rogan's, what's he worth? Two, three, four hundred million dollars? You're not going to tell me this guy can't get a drug? Yeah. Shit, I'm broke and I got enough money to get someone to write a script for me if I need to. <laughs> Please. Here we go. Turns out I got COVID. Look, they put a so yellow filter on me too. Immediately threw the kitchen sink at it. All kinds <laughs> of meds. Monoclonal you see the, the original video versus uh, that? I look like shit there. Z -pack. Do you know that? I think you look good. Pause. Uh, Pause. It's enough. Prednisone. I don't That's think. That's enough, Jim. I don't but, think Aaron had glee. Oh, well, it's more Brian Stelter was the gleeful one. But this, the point is, that's a lie. It can be used for humans. I, I get it. I, I totally... Not just could be used for humans. Is often used for humans along with all the other drugs I took. All human drugs. Yes. They know it's a human drug. It's, it's, a, it can, it's right. But and the, they lied. The thing is. It's I, defamatory. It, it, it is. It is uh, yeah, they shouldn't have done that. It's I get, defamatory, right? Can well, you, can I don't you know. Can sue them? I bet it is. Yeah, well. say, say again, Anna? Can he sue them? I, I don't know. I, I think they're going to say whatever they want to say. I think the drug company can sue him. I think Rogan can sue him. You know, do you think Sanjay Gupta can sue me for saying that he lives under the desk at CNN? He, yeah, anybody can sue anybody for anything. That's true. That's you know, true. Uh, yeah. So, uh, yeah, I don't, I, I don't know. Yeah, uh, I don't know why Rogan would spend his time suing anyone. I'm, I'm. No. I'm, I'm anti-sue unless someone kills a family member or maims you in some kind of way that takes your livelihood away. I don't believe in suing people over yeah, I agree. You know, spilled milk. You know, when I was a kid, there was a thing called sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt. Now we live right. in a world where, oh, you hurt me with your Everyone's words. blood hurt. Oh about my God. Yeah. Everyone's ass hurt for every fucking thing. And it yeah. drives me nuts. I don't want to live in that world. Okay. You know, we need to get back to sticks and stones. You know, <laughs> we, we really do need to get back because we're not there anymore. People are going, oh, you know, I, I was debilitated by your words. Fuck you. No one's ever been debilitated by someone else's words. That's a right. fucking lie. Because no one took more shit as a kid than me. And guess what? You know what it made me? It made me angry. It got me on my fucking horse and I started riding in the right direction. Okay. Calvin makes me stronger. Do -da 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 -da. I'm going to have to pull up that song. <laughs> 
No, I mean, it, it really, you know, there was a song, um, I want to say Johnny Cash did it. Somebody did it called A, a Boy Named Sue. Boy Named Sue. That's a you remember song. that song, A Boy Named oh, yeah. Sue? And mm -hmm. it was all about, you know, hey, you know, I, look, I knew I wouldn't be around for you, son. So I, I gave you a name so you can learn how to fight. Right? <laughs> yeah. Try being Vinny in a Cajun town. See what happens with a speech impediment, no less. I just had an audition for a, a, a character from the 50s with a New Orleans accent. You and I, all I did, did you Maury? was Maury. I just did Maury. <laughs> That's all I knew how to do. Anna, I'm still right. waiting to hear, obviously. You know what? I, I'm, I'm sick and tired of hearing uh, Joe Rogan and uh, thing. But boy, if you have that script anywhere near you, I can't read it because you have to sign an NDA. I can't read the script. But if I get the job, I will definitely send Marie her cut. Well, you know. Oh, no, no, no. Anna. Anna is very. Wait, hold on. She goes. Oh, no, 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 Vini. Anna is very beautiful. <laughs> the most beautiful girl. He ate the gravy. It was so good, Vini. <laughs> Well, that's pretty good. You you got it. Even Bill Meadows called me and says, no, she's got Marie. And no one's ever been able to do it. <clears throat> I remember when I was a kid, I'd walk from my school to the school where she taught. And you would walk in the hall. You couldn't hear any other teacher, but you can hear her voice. It would just, yeah, so just hear cutting down through. the hall. It just cuts right through. And um, boy, I mean, let me tell you, if you did Marie, you did a proper Cajun accent. You're not going to get the job, though, because... They want you to sound like a drunk. They wanted they wanted on, Kathy on Bates in some movie yeah. or something. Yeah, they, I was they like, want, they, they my voice isn't as deep as hers, so I could I can't do it. I'm sure I won't get it. No, you, you, they they want. I'll be like, what is this weird home. accent? This isn't an accent. I'll be like, it, it is actually. <laughs> People talk like that. Yeah, that's exactly how they sound. You know. Yeah. Anyway, you get the point. I've been on to this yeah. guy for a long time. He Circle. gets on there. And um, by the way, uh, someone sent me. I'm not going to play it because I'm done with this. But somebody played me another, you know, when Sanjay got back to CNN, he's up there with Don Lemon and, and they're doing the recap on Rogan and Don Lemon said, hey, you shouldn't have done that to you. Oh, my God. And it's like, screw you, Don Lemon. Screw all you motherfuckers. I, you know, all of you. I mean, I'm sick of all you fake news operations. You know, whatever happened to Walter Cron Cronkite? You know, and those guys, when, when you had real news, guys just got up there and read off of a teleprompter and did news. Fox, Fox is not news. Fox News is not news, folks. <laughs> I've got news. news. Fox CNN, News, yeah, not news. CNN, news. not news. MSNBC, not news. Not news. <laughs> those are news. They're, they're, not they're, news. They are akin to, like, Access Hollywood. It's the same thing. It's just opinions. But here's the problem is that people <clears throat> people are real attached to their Lauren is so attached to watching David. I can't even say his name. Muir. What's his name? I, I don't even know. Who I had to about. say it when I was doing the upfronts for ABC. Muir. Muir. Mm, don't David know. Muir. Oh. David Muir. Oh, he does oh. the ABC evening news. And Lauren is very attached to watching Muir every night and so when i say and i he's a nice guy i don't know i mean i'm not talking about lauren lauren is obviously a nice guy i'm married to him but david muir your husband's a douchebag man <laughs> but he likes his evening news and he doesn't like the tail end of muir because it's just puff pieces he likes the news at the beginning of muir he wants to know what's going yeah. on and he's, he's literally turning into an old man and he has to watch his mirror every night and people get very attached to their news thing. So right now, this whole thing that we've said has been very inflammatory to some people who want the news reported. And what I have to say is it's their job to make you freak the fuck out yeah. so that you continue watching the show so that then they can show a bajillion drug ads and give you ideas of something you might need just so you can ask your doctor if blah, blah, blah is right for you, okay? And I know this. Because I am that voice <laughs> says sure. that to you. <laughs> you know, Anna, my nephew always said to me, he worked in news, local news down in Baton Rouge for several years after college. And he said, if it bleeds, it leads. If it bleeds, yeah. it leads. That's By the right. way, Anna, I'm looking at this. This is on my desk right now. Let me put it up in a camera. I haven't shown this in a long time. 
Yeah, everybody, he's showing his copy of Fitness Confidential. Look at that rack of that? lamb. Oh, I'm sorry. Those are your abs. Yeah, look at, welcome to the gun show, Anna. Yeah, baby. By the way, I'm... Um, I want to like... I want to like... I'm sending flick, this book out to... Flick them. Do you know who Teresa Strasser is? You've told me about Teresa Strasser several times. Yeah, I, I'm in love with her. Um, she, uh, she and I had a very nice conversation at uh, Gina's wedding. Mm -hmm. She was the news Holden. girl whenever Corolla was on radio back right. in L.A. Right. And uh, she got smart and got the hell out. She worked in television <laughs> for a lot of years. She's a writer. She's written books and whatever. And um, Teresa and I became fast friends. And um, she asked if um, I could send a copy of my book. So it's sitting here right. on my desk and I'm looking at it going, I never I never do that. I never show my book. So anyone who's new to this podcast, the book is Fitness Confidential. It was a it, it sold a gazillion copies. Um, it's still it, it's still selling old. a gazillion copies. Yeah, it's ten years old. It's we don't know why and how it keeps selling, but it just keeps selling. So yeah. I, okay, because it's your story and your history, and it's great. It, it's one of the reasons I get to keep this show free. Yeah, because people buy the book. And they recommend, as a matter of fact, that uh, Dr. X hands it out. She buys, she, she won't buy them from me. She gets them from Amazon. She buys 50 at a time in a crate and she hands them out at the hospital. That's great. If, if they heal someone and they're getting ready to leave and they're morbidly obese, she tosses them out. She goes, I just here. And she goes, some people get upset and go, what are you saying? I'm fat. And she goes, no, I'm not saying you're fat. I'm saying you're morbidly obese and you're going to die. Read this book. That's what she does. She's a doctor. She could get away with that. Yeah. Right. Um, but I, I, I was, I'm just sitting here looking at it going, why is that book? Oh, yeah, I got to send that to Teresa Strasser. So uh, she will get the book. Uh, she she's heard a lot about it from Corolla, who loved the book and from Gina and everyone else. And it's a great book. Yeah, it was. It was um, um, you, you got me. Here we are. I'm going to 10 talk years about, later. I'm going to talk about my third movie in a minute. Great. But first, last night I binged something, and uh, I watched three shows. I think that's all it was. It might have been four, but I didn't get to bed until one o'clock in the morning because when I started watching, I could not stop watching. Oh no! You got to look this chick up. Oh, by the way, do you have the ivermectin thing? Let, let's. Did you read what it is? Oh what yeah, it just about? says. I'm at uh, the National Institutes of Health. It says ivermectin is an FDA approved anti-parasitic drug that is used to treat several neglected tropical diseases, included, including onchocariasis, helminthiasis, and scabies. It is also being evaluated for its potential to reduce the rate of malaria transmission by killing mosquitoes that feed on treated humans and livestock. For these indications, ivermectin has been widely used and is generally well tolerated. Ivermectin is not approved by the FDA for the treatment of any viral infection. So I guess... The argument is that uh, it's doing it off. What do they call it? Off. I heard off label. Yeah. Well, I, I don't know. I don't know what you call that. Kind of like when Botox was supposed to be used right. for right. your face, but then they put it in your. Uh, if you have a TMJ, they'll put Botox in your jaw to relax those muscles. Or if you have a profuse sweating problem, they'll put Botox in your armpits to keep you from sweating. So I'll much. give you. I'll give you another example. Um, I first started taking my first medication in life, um, Cialis, which is known as the boner pill. Mm -hmm. it, that Cialis started off as some other kind of pill, uh, but it's they probably figured, for cardiovascular or something. No, I don't know what it was, but it started something else. They figured out, oh wait, you know, because it's, it's a vasodilator, it causes boners, but they figured out that's twenty milligrams at five milligrams. It doesn't cause boners because God only knows Serena doesn't want me walking around with any extra boners. Right. I'm already Italian, but it helps you sleep through the night because I was waking up four times a night, four times. Mm -hmm. And then I started taking it. I'm sleeping through the night. My whole life has totally. changed because of a drug, a boner pill drug. I'm taking a, a micro dose of it. It makes all that go away. So now, you're uh, microdosing at, at some point. Yeah. At some point, I'm gonna have to go get a, a, a uh, procedure I, done. 
My aura ring said I woke up six times last night. Oh, I could tell you, I slept like a baby. <laughs> but before I went to bed, I, I was um, I was uh, watching something. Anna. Oh yeah. Must... Don't see Squid Game. No, I'm not watching Squid Game. <laughs> I'm not watching Squid. I, that's not my thing. HBO Max. It might be on regular HBO. I don't, what's the difference between HBO and HBO Max? I, uh, I HBO have... Max makes you install an app and then stream it to your TV. That's all I know. Okay, I have the Max. I, okay. So in HBO, there's a, a, a three or four part series called The Way Down. Now it's spelled way is spelled W A Y. Oh, but it's about a woman. Anna, you will love this because she's in the South. She's in North of South Carolina. Is it like a, a, a documentary or a it's a documentary? Place? No, it's documentary. Okay. This woman's completely out of her fucking mind. Her name is Gwen Shamblin. And she is just stealing people's money. It's a prayer. She writes a book. She becomes like a, a, a it's a cult. It, it's, you know, it qualifies as a cult. The whole thing is just, and the church is called, uh, it's called the Way Down Program, W-E-I-G-H, Down Workshop is the Way Down. And it's a Christian, you know, she, she became the remnant. So she got rid of the Holy Trinity and she is just the remnant. And it's, it, it's crazy. It's crazy. People died. People, you know, it's just, you know, guy killed his kid. And then I'll give you the end because you can you can Google this It's no big deal. She died in a plane crash with her loser piece of shit husband. It, it, it's, it's amazing what people believe and go through in life. And they're telling people they can lose weight by just abstaining from food. And every time you want to eat, just pray to God, it, the whole thing is just ludicrous. Oh, I use ludicrous in the right way. You said ludicrous, but I yeah. think you mean ludicrous. Yeah, but that's in lieu of Christ. That's what that word means. So I finally- so You're used... allowed to put the T on the end? Yeah. Because yeah. it's Christ? You don't even exactly. like that guy. Yeah. You don't even like Christ. <clears throat> I don't hate him. Oh, that's true. It's not you got beef with Christ? Him. All right, the way down. I wrote it down. Yeah, you, you got to watch it. We'll talk about it after you watch it in a week or two. Uh, and for anyone else who watches it, yeah, the hair gets bigger and bigger and she gets smaller and smaller. Oh, and, I know what you're talking about. Now. Oh, yeah. When you see it, you'll get it. Um, yeah, it's weird. It's weird. One more thing, Anna, before we yep, get to do it. You have. Do it. For the first time two days ago, now, this, I'm, we're recording this on Thursday. This is coming out on Monday. First time two days ago, I saw my entire movie. Still not giving the name out. Still not putting it out there. I'm so excited. I, I saw the I watched the whole thing in sequence. Because when you're making a movie, when you're making a documentary and you're working with, uh, you know, I'm, I'm the director, right? So I'm in it, I'm directing it, and I'm, you know, because I don't have Pardini anymore, I have, I, I can't edit, right? It's not easy to just sit there. You know, these people have these big thousands of dollar machines that they edit on, right? And these programs. All I can do is say, I want this here, that there. And I would see this five minute clip, <clears throat> this seven minute clip. And I would say, okay, I want this to back up to that. I want to put this in between. And then I would have to get on the same mic and I would just record stuff into here. And I would have Serena in her booth, like the booth you're in. And, you know, Serena, I need you to say these words and read right. this and do this. The fact that it becomes a movie at some point is still like, I'm such, I'm just Frankensteining this stuff together, right? I'm, I'm not a movie maker. I'm just a guy that tells a story and I want the story to, to tell the story. Does right. that make sense? Oh yeah. So all of this goes on, but I only see this and now, I, you know, I could take that and put it next to that and wise the two together to make sure it works. And then I'll say, hey, take that and move that over there and move this over here. I do all that. I finally watched, I sat down 84 minutes. I watched the whole thing. That's awesome. End to end. Anna, 
what's in this movie almost seems unbelievable. Uh -oh. no, one, no one is safe. No one. There's not a vegan doctor that's safe. Um, the, I, I go after fake meat. I show you exactly what they're doing. I show you exactly what they're trying to do in the background, how they're trying to get you guys to go in this direction. You're not going to believe what you're watching. You're not going to believe it. You have to see it to believe it. I will become the most hated man in America. And oh, if I don't, well, I didn't do my look, job. I look forward to podcasting with you then. And no problem, Gina. Shit. Gina, I just called you Gina. Anna, yeah, I heard you. Guess, guess who I call, what I call Gina. Anna, Serena, Nancy. Pretty much Anna. I just call <laughs> Anna. The poor girl, she, barely we get her name out in the show. Um, <laughs> but folks, this, I can honestly say this trumps the original fat, a documentary in leaps and bounds. Wow. Yeah. And I show, you know, how I tried to get all these different vegan doctors on, begged them to come on, and how they turned me down. I go after game changers. I go after what's his name who did game changers? Um, uh, uh, Cameron, James Cameron, and his wife, hey, James Cameron. His wife, who looks like a goddamn tails from okay, the who's crypt. Kip? Who am I thinking of? Oh, he's what the health? He's what the health? You know, look, I don't like to beat on wounded people. Um, but yeah, I, I went after these people. Shady. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta like what I did there, Anna. You gotta mm -hmm. like it. I'm very proud of my work. I can't wait to see it. They are not sponsors of the show anymore, folks, but. I checked today, hopefully it'll still be up on Monday. Um, Bell Campo 15% off. I've noticed Anna, because I can still see the affiliate thing. Right. People have gone from just getting over $100. Mm -hmm. they're getting the highest one I've seen so far is $650. Right. A couple of Smart. right at 600. A uh, lot of four and five hundreds. That's like getting a free giant Five. brisket, by the way, you should get that much. Yeah, look, when you get $500 minus, minus 15%, what is that, Anna? That's uh, 15 uh, 75 times. bucks off. 75 bucks. You know, they're not sponsoring the show anymore, but I asked them to keep that open for a month. They told me they would keep it open for as long as possible. Look, if they go over a month, I'll keep telling you guys about it. Right. And they're not even paying for this right now. Mm -mm. But if you go to bellcampo.com, put in promo code Vinny, and get your 15% off. Yeah. That's all I'm saying. Um, you could do it, not do it. Notice, look, if I was doing an ad, I, they would have demanded that I did it in the first 15 minutes of the show. We're at 50 minutes. This is not an ad, folks. I'm not doing this for Bel Campo or for my pocketbook. I'm doing it for you. And by the way, I'm doing one more order too. I thought I had enough. I wonder if I could do a thousand dollar order. Just, I don't have that much room in my deep freeze. Otherwise, I would. Like Anna, I can see Anna's over there ordering right now. <laughs> She's like, I gotta get. I, I will see. The thing is, is that I want to get the um, the big roasts because yeah. people order those and then they sell out. Yeah, you know, get it because you, we're doing this on Thursday. You'll be able to get it before they. Um, yeah. Before Monday and everyone before else. It all stops. Them. Yeah. So uh, that's about Campbell. Anna, what do you have over there? Okay, first of all, I just wanted to give an observation about because we talk about remember how we were on the clubhouse and Ted was there shout out to Ted. And yeah. he booked a thing with you. He did. And you were talking about and you can go and listen back to the clubhouses on my site. But you were talking about being honest with yourself. Like, right. what are you where are you with it? Well, I, it's not working. And I've been doing this, that and the other thing. And I've really committed and and then after you talk to them for a little while and you talk through what they're eating, they are having a bite of this here, a bite of that there, and almost every day doing something to impede any potential progress, right? And it was, we went out to dinner with some new friends. And uh, I'm happy to say we're making friends in our new place. 
Um, you guys are easy though, and your husband. We'll has, alienate them before long. Don't worry. Your husband has that cool Jeep and everything, and you guys. There are, are two Jeeps now. I know. I know. You showed me both. I'm a oh yeah, you want to buy one? <laughs> kind of. We have I two. Have Jeeps. Place. It turned out as two too many Jeeps. <laughs> Yeah, I, well, I don't have. I would buy that CJ five in a heartbeat. He's gonna hang on to it for a while. Don't yeah, worry. Hopefully, I, I got to convince Serena because I don't have any space. In I my know garage. you got to make the space. These and, Jeeps are friggin' cool. He's got a seventy three CJ five and an eighty five CJ seven, and they're friggin' cool. They're, but Anna, they're just gonna go up in value. We had no Jeeps, and now there are two Jeeps. I can't drive them, so well, they're on him. It's on him. Um. But we Can went we out with some new friends and it's funny because people did people ever do this to you when you go out to dinner with them or when they come over for dinner or you go over there they because you don't like i don't lead with like doing nsng i'll just get a steak or usually what comes out with me first is the celiac because people are like oh let's split a flatbread or something and i'm like y'all get that i'm gonna get shrimp cocktail right and i don't like call attention to it but I just say, and then it comes to, oh, she's got celiac. She doesn't eat gluten. And then people go, oh, I don't, I don't, I don't eat gluten either. I stay away. I avoid it. I stay away from it. And I'm always like, right. you, you don't have to, I don't care. <laughs> like, but they tell me, and then it comes out, they learned, oh, you do the cookbook and you NSNG and, and like, oh, I don't, I never eat carbs. I don't eat carbs. We don't, we, I don't even buy them. I don't buy them. They're not in the house. And I'm like, right. okay, again, like, I don't, I don't care. They're in my house because my husband eats them all the time. Yeah. And, um, I uh, realized because in talking to people like they, they, they say these things, and I'm like, you don't have to do. I don't care if, if you are looking for answers. I'm here for you. I'm ready to, like, give you some recipes and stuff, although the recipes are good, with, regardless of if you eat sugars or grains. But and then I noticed, like, then in the conversation, it's like, oh, once a week we go, we go to this bakery and we get this <laughs> sourdough and we eat that until it's yeah. gone, you know, because you don't want to waste it. And we have the toast every morning and, and then, it, and then it's like the thing, and, oh, we get these potatoes and the thing and, and it's totally fine. But I, I was like, oh, this is what Vinny's talking about. Yeah. It's like a little mixture of cognitive dissonance also with like a, a feeling of like, that you have to like be or say something that you're not to me. Cause I, again, I don't care. And I'm not the carb police. I don't give a shit. I don't right, care right. what anybody eats. I really don't. And, um, but then the cognitive dissonance of like how much you actually do eat the sugars and grains. You know what I'm saying? Like, it was really interesting. I was like, oh, so basically you said, oh, we never, we don't even have them in the house, but, but unless it's bread, potatoes, uh, rice or corn, right. but other than that, we don't have, else. and I just thought it was interesting to hear that. I'm like, oh, we subconsciously do these things and we don't even, and we all do it by the way. We're right. all like not conscious of, of exact. And it's until you decide like, I'm like, Ted is done and he's committed. He's Ted said, I had 60 some odd years eating the other way. Let me go whole hog in this way and just well, really commit. And, and then you realize all the times that you might've blind. Like, for example, when I was making Mac and cheese for Lucy, when she's little, I would just grab a bite of the thing and not even think about it. Take a bite of it while I'm doing it. You don't even know all these like unconscious moves in your life. So I just want well, to mothers do that because you're always at the beginning. You know, if, if you heat up milk or whatever, you know, you're testing it on your arm, you're taking a taste, you know, and I mothers get into that. I better taste it first. It's just animalistic. And then before you know it, you're eating it. You know, you're not you're doing more than testing. You're eating French fries from McDonald's. And, you know, I remember talking to Ted that night. And, you know, I hate blowing someone's cover in social media, but we were on on your clubhouse. And he was like, man, I'm doing NS and I'm doing I'm doing and, you know, I was able to unravel some of it right there. Ted actually set up a phone call with me a few days later. And we were really able to get deep and to really get him off of the junk. And Which he was is why I tell people always book a consult with Vinny, he'll go, he'll go deep. I haven't told this story in a long time, but what the hell? I'm in okay. a jovial mood. <laughs> I, whenever I get someone on the phone and they'll say, man, I, I've been doing NSNG and I lost 50, 60, you name it, pounds. And then it stopped dry. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Usually it's around 30 pounds when it stops dry. Some people get to 50 and 60 and stop dry. And I'll go, okay, do you have any more weight to lose? Yeah, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm 
this woman in the case of this, she goes, I'm five, five, and I still weigh, you know, close to 200 pounds, something like that. I'm, I'm, mm-hmm. I'm not exaggerating by much, it might have been 195. Right. And I was like, Okay, and this, this was several years ago, Anna, and you might remember me telling the story. So I'll just she had an hour to spend with me on the phone. And I have her take me through her entire diet. And I make people literally, literally start with, I wake up, and, Mm -hmm. you know, they'll go, I wake up, and it's like, I wake up, and I have coffee. I'll go, no, go back. Did you pee? Yes. Tell me. I want you, I wake up, I take a leak, I go to the kitchen, coffee. Now, did your coffee have cream? And they go, oh, wow, you want, you want all, yeah, Mm -hmm. I want to know. I'm trying to think like your liver. Mm-hmm. See, your liver is a meritocracy. And when I do this on the phone with people, I need to think like your liver is seeing things. I've been doing this for 40 years. I know what I'm doing. And people are always shocked. I have them, they, they think I'm not like halfway listening and doing some shit on a computer. I'm absorbing <laughs> all of it, right? right? And then I'll go back and go, okay, this, that, this, that, this, that. If you change those five things, you'll start losing weight. Really, those are small, change them, you'll start losing weight again. And they do. They think I'm the amazing Kreskin. And um, they, they move on. Well, this woman went through her diet, Anna. Mm-hmm. And I swear to you, her diet, I, I was I was doing one of my life into no life into living years, mm-hmm. where I, I stay in deep ketosis, even if I'm with Kristen Scott Thomas, and I have wine, that kind of thing. Yeah, I'm like, I'm deep, right? This woman's diet is as deep as mine. I mean, this is one of those years where even on my birthday, I didn't, uh, no cake, nothing. Right. This woman was kind of like that. Yeah. I had her do, and whenever I get confused, I'll say, all right, start over. Kind of like, you know, interrogation when they bring someone in with a cop. You're you're looking for inconsistencies. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to sweat them. Before you said you had a half a cup of coffee, but now you're saying it's a cup of coffee. Was it Sanka? You know, and you know, I, I'll literally start getting. I hate using this, but I get a bit granular with them, right? Now, just mm-hmm. I'm now the second lap. I'm telling my little secrets, but I'm looking for inconsistencies, right? Mm-hmm. Are we not allowed to say granular? I don't. Is that... Oh, that is douchey. It's kind of like when people used to say wheelhouse. <laughs> Listen, I'm gonna. We're gonna loop you in and get granular, and we're gonna circle back around and have some synergy. And then and we're gonna right my it, wheelhouse. And then we're gonna run it up the flagpole and see. Run it up the flagpole, and then uh, I don't know. That's all. Those are all the corporate words I know. Anyway, great. You no, know, she was getting cellular, man. And, uh, I just <laughs> she she was getting molecular. Yeah, she was getting like she was atomizing. Man, it's getting out to. Adams yeah, right down to participles, uh, no, not participles. What do they call particles? Part- particles, yeah, not yeah. the parts of words. The parts participles of words. are parts of words, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so anyway, so what's she say? Because by the way, everyone's ears are perking up, and this relates to the next question I'm going to ask you. So, what happened? Hang in there, Anna. What happened? Hang in there. I get through the second lap, still nothing. Not, this woman's got the perfect fucking diet. Ironclad. Except the one thing I've, I was like, oh, she's eating dinner late, but that wouldn't stop you dry. You know, she was eating like at 8 30, 9 o'clock. She's probably still listening to this podcast. This was like six, seven years ago. And then on the third lap, I made her start over again because mm-hmm. I, I was like a dog with a bone, man. I wasn't. Yeah, you were going to figure it out. And she goes, I said, okay. So, you and your husband, you, you know, you get home at five o'clock, but you don't start cooking until eight. And she goes, yeah, we like to sit on the porch and talk about our day. You know, we've been married for 25 years. We talk about our day. And um, we crack a bottle of wine every night. <clears throat> mm-hmm. You do? Oh, yeah. And, um, you know. I'm not a lush or anything, but when you finish that bottle of wine, it could, t- it could take a while. You're sipping through it. I said, does your husband drink it too? Oh, yeah, he, uh, he has half the bottle. I have half the bottle. And 
we just sit there and relax our day away and talk about work and the kids and what have you. And I said, okay. And then you go right in and cook dinner. She goes, you know, we do that together too. It's a ritual. She goes, I'm, I'm telling you, Vinny, it's, it's what kept our marriage fresh all these years. And um, she goes, he does this, I do that. He likes to do all the chopping. And that's when we open the second bottle of wine. Oh. And uh, I said, Oh, how much of that do you get? She goes, Well, when you consider we're cooking, and we, we usually hold back a bit because we like to have the last glass with dinner. Oh. This woman who was five, five was drinking a Four bottle glasses of wine, of wine. a mm -hmm. bottle by herself every day. And then I had to explain to her how that was like <laughs> a bottle of sugar. Mm -hmm. And that her brain was linking that you she was never getting off of she was doing everything else. Per, and she even said, Well, I was doing everything else just right. Now you're going to take my wine. Like, I'm not taking your wine away. I'm just telling you if you want to continue losing weight the way you were. And she goes, Well, why was I losing weight at first? And now I'm not. And I said, because at first, you stopped eating crappy food, you stopped eating fried foods, they, they're, they, they're culinary people, they love eating, you stopped eating, you know, French toast for breakfast, you stop, you stopped a lot of bad habits. And your body lost a lot of inflammation, and you lost a lot of water, and you lost some fat, but then there was a new normal. And when you when your brain got to that, you were drinking a bottle of wine every day. Right. That's what happened. That's where she was. And did she, did she quit it? She she slowed down. I had to tell her about vodka, I had to teach her all the stuff about spirits and said, Is it possible that you know, you and your husband do you guys work on the weekends? No. Can you take the weekends off of drinking altogether? Right? Most people like to drink on the weekends. She took the weekends up. She goes, I never considered that before. I went, mean, yeah, yeah, just cut it down, cut it low, cut it back a bit. Right. And that's what she did. And she started losing weight again. So that seems like copious amounts of alcohol for a woman to drink. We're talking seven bottles a week. And she couldn't figure out why she was well, 14, including the, the ones her husband was drinking. Well, yeah, between them. Yeah. I think uh, one of them worked and they're up in your area. And I think one of them right. was in the business, and they were able to get a lot of wine and they were they yeah. were they were connoisseurs. And they loved what they did. Andrea always says she's like, I don't understand you guys because you and Lauren, you open a bottle of wine. And I'm like, Yeah. And then she goes, and you don't finish it. I'm like, No. And she goes, and she, she's picked up a bottle of wine in our house for and been like, When did you open this? I don't know, a couple days ago. <laughs> she's like, who opens a bottle of wine and then doesn't finish it? And I was like, we do. Because how much are you like, how wasted are you going to be? Like, I don't know, like, to me, maybe I have maybe I have a low tolerance or something. But I I don't enjoy if I have four glasses of wine, I'll be hammered, I will have a headache, I'll be ruined the next day, probably the day after that, because now I'm old enough where I have two day hangovers. Yeah, I had like three whiskeys uh, two weeks ago just neat. Yeah. Because it was one of those situations where everybody's talking and they just keep refilling it. I'm like, that's great. This is smooth. <laughs> little, 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 little. Dead. <laughs> Dead. Two days? Yes. <laughs> uh. I took ultra salts. I took Advil. I drank water. I took, um, I made homemade chicken broth with the salt. Nothing. That first day, I was toast. Really? It was awful. Wow. So I just can't. And I believe to, I don't know, at a certain age, maybe at some point you're like, yeah, it's okay. It's I enjoy the first one. And then always the second or the third, you're like, it's not worth it. So that's why I stick to one. You know, Andrea is in my favorite television show of all time. Mm -hmm. Ted Lasso. Yes, and she's she only in it for like two seconds. I know. You know, I, I wish they would do more with her, but um, yeah, we she played get it back. Ex wife. 
Yeah, we got to get her back on the show. Uh, they, I, I've already watched the whole second season. Will they bring her on at all in the third season? Or she I don't know. In fact, I, I, uh, a friend of mine's like, oh, I saw Andrea in the second season. I was like, she wasn't in the second season. They're like, no, I literally just saw it. She was in it. And I was like, and I texted her like, you were in the second season? She was like, oh, yeah, I forgot to tell you I shot that. It was yeah, like two it, seconds it, it, over it, Skype. And I was like, yeah, oh, okay. yeah, yeah. The, the, the biggest part was when they brought her to England for one episode. They brought her to, to you know. Mm -hmm. So she had to do the crying and stuff. She can do that stuff. That's amazing. It's a, you know that. what? That scene she cries for like hours on end. It, it, she. I, I remember that scene like it was yesterday well, because I'm on the second round of watching it. I probably saw it yesterday. But <laughs> Andrea, when she she's facing outside and, and uh, Ted Lasso comes up behind her, Sudeikis comes up behind her and she turns around, and she's crying. Right. Right. And she she does the whole, I, you know, I thought I could do it. I can't do it anymore. I can't. I can't. I can't. And then the kid walks in the room and she changes, you know, to go, hey, honey. And she kind of wipes her eyes. And then she she goes, yeah, let's go do it. Let's go play. And I'm like, that's a black magic woman right there. I know she just on the dime. And she the, a, she's in a big movie that's coming out probably Christmas of next year. And she has to do that. And she will cry. She'll she's able to cry. And it's not even the camera's not on her. The coverage is on her and she can still do it. I'm like, how do you do that? Because I would have to actually access some like deep shit. Like I'm like, no. I remember one time I was at an audition. They're like, we need you to actually cry for this. And I was like, I am not your gal. Not doing it. Serena can do it. But, you know, the kids next door. Not interested. So the kids next door. Go, oh, you're an actress. They go, cry for us. And it's like, the, the, what they don't realize is they these actresses have to bring up emotions that they don't like to deal with. No, 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 no. We squash those emotions. Am I right? Yeah, like, yeah squash they squash them, them until it's time to. Bring How them do up. you become a machine? Squash your emotions. <laughs> that's the Anna Pacino school of dealing with grief and pain. Yeah, uh, you know, and, and that's what, um, you know, you can't just tell an actress, start crying. Then you become a wonderful comedian. Cry, bitch. Yeah. <laughs> then you become you. <laughs> this is what happens to people that uh -huh. watch their emotions. Squash. Oh, watch. By the Squish way, watch. Did, did I talk on this show about the kids coming over and watching Rocky One? You talked about them bringing baked goods, but can I ask real quick before you do that a related sure. question to what the story you just talked about? Yeah, oh, go on. I'm hitting my own mic. Um, this has to be asked anonymously. Because okay. it says, can you ask anonymously? Listen to the Georgia, is it Georgia Ede or Georgia Edie? I never know how to say her it, name. Georgia Eads. Georgia, Georgia Eads. Eads. Okay. Listen to the Georgia Eads episode. And she mentioned struggling to lose weight as she aged. She solved it by eliminating plants from her diet. What science is behind this and how do hormones, testosterone, et cetera, that dropped after a certain age have an effect on this? I would love to hear more on this as it's going to happen to every woman at some point doing NSNG right now, but not seeing results due to menopause asking for a friend. Yeah, you know, um, I'll try to guess who it is because you'll never guess. Leona? No. Yeah. Okay. It's somebody okay. who listens to the show very regularly, but uh, they don't chime in very often. Jackie Jones? No. And Jackie Jones is my well, age. Well, she went carnivore. Yeah, no, Jackie Jones is my age. Jackie Jones looks amazing, by the way. Oh, um, my God, she does. She's oh, my tearing God. It up. She, she mm -hmm. sent me uh, a birthday gift. Um, of course she did, because she's the most thoughtful human on the planet. Yes. I mean, I, I, how do you become Jackie Jones in life? Uh, yeah, if, if you I know can, that she on. had her friend who crochets amazing stuff, crochet a chef outfit for Izzy, including the little hat wow. for Izzy. Wow. Had her friend and then mailed it to me. Do you know how much I, I fell on the floor when I saw it? No, and also, Izzy hates it. Of course. So I have to make sure that I time it out well and like we have the camera ready to go because it is the cutest thing you've ever seen. She ain't having it, right? No. Yeah. Um, okay. Menopause. So kind of what you were talking about with, menopause. I don't know what age the woman was who was having the bottle of wine. Obviously, look at your alcohol consumption. <laughs> See if wine is happening. You know, people ask me about, you know, the vegetable thing. Do you need vegetables? Do you have to have that? You know, and, and, and you, we just named Jackie Jones because I was trying to make a joke. And Jackie Jones is a woman who lost a lot of weight in SNG, was doing great. Right. 
but wanted to take it to a different level, thought she can do even better and just cut out all vegetables. Oh my there it God. Is. Yeah, that's she long. had a friend crochet that chef outfit. Unbelievable. Crazy. Your dog looks so sad right now. Miserable. Yeah. So you take someone like Jackie Jones, who, you know, wanted to do even better. She wasn't where she wanted to be yet. And she's just went full on carnivore. Um, some people could get away with vegetables. I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. I mean, you're asking me what I can get away with. I can actually get away without gaining weight with some carbs. I don't because of the cancer thing. Right. right? You mean you don't take in the carbs, but you could right. get away with it if you weren't trying to do the Yeah, because I did, for, I, I, I did for years on the bike. Right. You know, and, and of course, I was riding 15 to 17,000 miles a year. Right. Folks, that's as much as Lance Armstrong and those guys would ride professionally. Uh, most people don't put that on their car per year. No, you know, I'm a guy. I'm I'm a freak. I'll get on. And during COVID, I did two point something million meters on my rowing machine because I was right. bored. Right. So I can have some carbs and get away. I don't want carbs in me because I'm keeping cancer at bay now at 14 plus years. Right. Right. Um, We're talking about menopausal women. But hang on. When I do have vegetables, I keep it to broccoli, cauliflower, asparagus, and uh, uh, Brussels sprouts. The reason being is, well, I like those. Number one, number two, um, <clears throat> they're most of them not the not the asparagus are cruciferous vegetables, meaning there's a lot of nitrates and nit nitrites in them, nitrates and nitrites, two different things, very similar molecule. And those give you a lot of energy. There's a lot of bang for your buck in those. And I don't eat them every day and all the time. Right? Because at some level, some people <clears throat> going through menopause, people like Georgia eat, I think George is my age, so she must have gone through menopause. Um, any kind of starch will cause an effect. And that's just the bottom but, line. Uh, will the cruciferous cause an effect? That's yeah, yeah, I think what the person yeah, yeah. is asking. So it, it could, it could. It, the only way you can know, when you say starch, I think starchy vegetable as right. opposed to cruciferous. Well, I know what you mean, but those, I just want to be clear. Are not as starchy as other vegetables. Obviously, right. it's not a potato. You know, it's not a beet. Um, but it could still cause a problem for some people if, especially if you're going through menopause. I lived through menopause. <laughs> I, I know that's not an easy time. And, and I'm with a very, very lean woman who ran ultras during her menopause. It caused me to drink a bit. <laughs> it did. That's all right. You but I made it through. Look at me now, bitches. Look at me now. That's like uh -huh. my friend's husband when he went in for his vasectomy, he came out and she was like, she picked him up or whatever. And he was like, Oh my God, it was awful. I was nauseous for like 15 minutes. <laughs> She's like, Oh really? I'm yeah. Sorry. I'm sorry. You were nauseous for a whole 15 minutes, yeah. but thank you for taking one for the team. So, <laughs> yeah, he I, you know, too. he was very upset that he had to be nauseous for 15 minutes. Yeah, were guys were a bunch of pussies. We can do what women do. I well, couldn't, couldn't do I guess the question becomes, then do you just kind of self experiment and see what works for you? Anna, remember how they figured out you had celiac? They said, stop eating bread. Let's see what happens. You know, that, that that's the only way to know is to try something. Oh, yeah. And the biggest irony being, there's no trace of any damage from celiac disease at all in yeah. my upper endoscopy. The issue now I'm having is the, the, the molecular, I don't remember what it's called. Granular, the granular it's level. The granular synergy is what the problem I'm having. Yeah, that's what I've you got. I've got a bad case of the granular synergy. <laughs> no, but it makes me wonder because 
Horm, Horm, I, I, I like to ask that question. Obviously, I'm of a certain age. I'm not going through menopause yet, but I'm will be. I'm sure it's imminent. I'm oh, 48. You're right there. I got to go through right there again. I'm, yeah, you be careful because I'm gonna call and yell at you when I'm done yelling uh, at Lauren. So, so I'm personally curious about this stuff. I, my hormone levels are all good when I'm on plan which is almost all the time. By the way, I'm wearing this continuous glucose monitor thing. How's that working out? I like it. You know what? The thing is, you know, CGM is not revolutionary. I just like the NutriSense, um, all the app stuff. It's very, con I'm, I'm going to film a video of it and put it up on my site. I really like whoa, whoa, it. How, whoa, whoa, hang on then. The only, th the only time, because they said the whole point is to do it, see what the thing is, and then do experiments. And I didn't do any experiments except for potato chips. So you stuck it on and went on and got yourself some Hagen dazs <laughs> No, no, I didn't have Hagen dazs I had potato chips because that's what Lauren had in the house. So wait, like, hang on. I, I, what is it normally? Like when you put it on, how long has it been on? Can you give us some info? It, yeah, it's been on since October 2nd. I think it's, I, I'm probably due to take it off soon. Look, my score is a 10. I have a 10 out of 10. Okay, so tell me. Um, my blood sugar runs high. That's the thing. And it runs higher since I've been, do I've been doing NSNG for like almost 10 years. Right. I mean, with the exception of like a few life into livings, I don't go off the rails. And, and, and um, it's still high. Yeah, it's higher. Yeah. Huh. So that's, that's the thing. But my A1C is, goes between 4.9 and 5.1. So people aren't worried and fasting insulin's fine. Hormone levels are fine. Even thyroid has healed. Cause you, I had hypothyroidism when we first, huh? Are you in dietary ketosis? Uh, I was at 1.1 when I tested earlier today. That's, that's which is like my, I don't go into deep dietary ketosis unless I'm fasting. If right. I'm fasting, I'll get it up to like a 2.5 to a 3.5. Um, I, look, I mean, my well, that's just where I am. I, you know what I mean? It's like, and I actually have liked wearing this because like I test the precision monitor, but this is continuous. So I'll scan right now. Oh, are they pretty close? You like this? Yeah, I, I did. Because I, I do a test every day and they were two points off. That's as close as you're going to get. An 80. Your blood sugar is 80? My blood sugar is 80. And what's your ketosis right now? I don't know what my ketosis is. I have to go prick my finger. Oh, oh, that's right. You got to do it. It was 1.1 1. 1 around two o'clock today. What so, time but, and, and the blood sugar was 93 at, at three o'clock right before we started. Anna, would you, would, can you prick right now? So we yeah, can, I can. I, I, while she's doing that, I'll tell you guys about Villa Capelli olive oil. Villa Capelli, folks, we're going to get Anna to prick right here on camera because unlike Gina Grad, she's not scared to prick her finger. Um, Villa Capelli, longest running sponsor of this show, Villa Capelli. Um, Paul Capelli, a uh, great man, passed away about a year and a half ago. We just had Stephen Crutchfield on the show, and he talked about how much he loved the support of this show. And, and it, this show was one of me and Anna and Andy and everyone around us helped um, Stephen. We didn't even know we were helping him, you know, just being a friend. He would listen to the show. He, he, he took, he, he went to the helm. He and Paul ran that company. They were spinning like a top, as we used to say back in the day. Paul was no longer there. Stephen could have easily walked away and said, <clears throat> I'll never, never crush another olive ever. And um, boom, he kept Villa Capelli going. So we're going to keep supporting them because they keep supporting us. Villa Capelli olive oil, folks. You want to save 10%, put in promo code Vinny, V-I-N-N-I-E. You want to save even more money. There you go. Anna's doing it on camera. Um, you want to save even more money at Villa Capelli? Get over $100 after your 10% Vinny discount, and you'll also get free shipping. So get that big 3 liter 10, 1.4. Anna, you run higher than me, and I exercise all day. And I, as you know, I don't, I don't mess around with my diet. And uh, I don't I'm mess gonna... around, Vinny. I just have my blood sugar just runs high. Yeah. And and by the way, it never ran. I always ran low. I had hypoglycemia before I did this. Wow. So I feel like they're just going to come out with more studies and more information as this stuff goes along. So I feel like for me personally, and I'm obviously we're not doctors, we're not recommending anything. If your A1C is in check and your fasting insulin's in check, 
Maybe your blood sugar is a little, and by the way, 80 is not like crazy or anything. Right. Right. Um, and it, it, the only time it went over 120 was when I had potato chips. It went up to 137. Wow. And then it went back down. Everything, every time it stays, mine stays between 80 and it basically 110. And it goes, I had definitely have the high, it's closer to between 90 and 110 when I wake up. And then it sticks around 70s or 80s most of the day, although it was 93 earlier when I checked it. When it was 0.4 on this thing, it was 93 blood sugar. You see what I'm saying? Oh, now it's yeah. gone. But it was 1.4. You saw that. You know, you can, you can dredge it back up and just look at your last. I don't know how to do that. All right, Anna, hold it up. I'll show you. Oh, I just pressed the on button. Yeah. All right. Now click it back one, the, the back, like the arrow that looks like it's the going left to the side. Back. Yeah. Oh, no, that's setting the time. Well, you must have clicked something wrong because you can look back every day and just keep going back. Oh, I didn't know you could do that. Yeah. That's what those buttons are for. Well, I tell you what, this two weeks with the NutriSense, with the CGM, I found highly illuminating because I wondered but if like, here, here's the thing, because I was wondering like, if I had some dairy, would that raise my blood sugar? If I had some nut butters, would that raise my blood sugar? If I, you know what I mean? I was wondering like, what was going to mess with me? With the vegetable, because the vegetables were concerned because this is what we've talked about. When I went carnivore back for January, I lost a bunch of poundage. Like, right. boom, like it went fast. Yeah. And then I added back in my cruciferous and my leafy greens and I gained some back. And so that's why I'm interested in this topic of conversation because I was like, is it happening because it's a blood sugar issue? Apparently not because I'm in ketosis. And so that's what I'm saying. Like, I'm going to keep trying to figure this out. It's it means a lot to me to figure it out. And Vinny well, and I have had multiple conversations about this. Yeah. Well, if you're new to the show, Anna spent a lifetime killing herself with diets and all this kind of stuff. She was a ballerina yeah. when she was a kid. Yeah. And uh, all of the stuff that comes along with that. Um, Anna, tell everyone where you got your CGM uh, set up from and the app. Oh, explain. Well, uh, oh, I thought you meant the ever... precision. By the way, let me just say for go, you guys got to go to Amazon to get this precision extra, but go to vinnytortrich.com first. Did you already say the Amazon thing while I was gone? No, I was doing Villa Capelli. Um, we'll, we'll do Here that. Here it is, it's but... 1.4 again. It came back up. You're right. Yeah, we, we, you have to let it turn all the way off. And, and Anna, all right, while that's up, wait, don't touch, touch yeah. the back button and you'll see yesterday or the, or the time before. And then the time, and it'll show you the date and the time before and the time before. Are you seeing it? Mm-hmm. See, so you can it was keep point, It was point 0.3 earlier today. And I also checked my blood sugar, which was 91 at the same time. And it was 93 on this thing. So that's why I wanted to check. So that, to make that's sure right in there. Yeah. Yeah. Anna, uh, let me ask you this. People are going to know where you got your CGM thing from. Explain okay. how that goes and how you have to go. So I know it. there's a ton of companies out there, but here's the thing. My doctor wanted me to do a CGM and then I didn't do it because <laughs> I don't always listen to my doctor. You know, I was like, I don't need that. I'm fine. I have my precision extra, which I love, by the way. I love that precision extra. It's great, but it's not a CGM. Right. Now I know this. So then the NutriSense people reached out to me and I was like, oh, funny, you should reach out because my doctor wanted me to. I felt like, did my doctor call them or something? So they reached out. They sent me one. And so I've been wearing it the almost two weeks now. It doesn't hurt to put it on or anything. I forget that it's there, except for sometimes it gets caught on my shirt when I'm changing clothes. and. Uh, there's a discount code, 25 bucks off, Anna 25, but I'll do a post about it. It's not like a big thing. What does what, what something like that cost, Anna? I, I don't know. I should look it up. Yeah. I, they sent it to me. I, that's why I need to get more informed. But, but the thing that I like about it is that you can really get granular with your data. Wow. You can like put in all your health stuff. It puts How in the workouts. It puts in at, at the particular level. It's particular. No. Particular. Partic Articulate. Yeah. Percolate. How to articulate your particulate. This show is getting longer. Children's longer. book. <laughs> yeah, it is. We're done. Uh, folks, if you like what's also going too, on. Also, I just here. wanted to show that. Did you get yours in the mail yet? I did. And I told Serena, I said, don't open them yet. We were going to open them last night. I said, don't open them. I want to do a thing for Anna. Make, make this. Just make sure you put some ricotta cheese or some Parmesan cheese with it. It's really good. Okay. Oh, we got some really good Parmesan. We just yeah. Put, put the good Parmesan on there. I spend the bank on Parm. I really do. Me too. I really do. 
Um, <clears throat> folks, Anna Vecino, which she was holding up just now, if you're, you know, because she didn't say what it was. Oh, was her pumpkin spice marinade. Created ads. It's, uh, it's really good. You want this stuff. Yeah, no sugar go to, in it. Go to, no sugar whatsoever. Oh. And it's pure everything. Go to Eat Happy Kitchen. She has the pumpkin marinara. Is that just seasonal, Anna? What's the deal? Yeah, we have about 70 jars left, and I might take away about six to eight of them just in case if anybody has any breakage. I don't want them to miss any. You know, sometimes things break. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, go check that out. Also, she has the marinara. She has the uh, pink sauce, as I call it. That's the, the pink crema. And mm -hmm. she also has the puttanesca. They're all great gravies. Go check them out at eathappykitchen.com. Also, mm -hmm. uh, Eat Happy Kitchen came out of the Eat Happy Cookbooks. That's right. That we're both penned by Anna. I was holding my book up a little while ago, and uh, Anna has two books. You, can you hold one of them up, Anna? Do you have them there? Mm -hmm. Anna, show them to the audience here. Um, oh, by the way, for the first time in a year, Amazon marked this book down to $27. I saw so that on I saw that on. I tagged you in it because I was like... <laughs> It yeah, hasn't been an easy journey. On it second and book. The second book's my favorite too. So I'm always like, get the second book. It's kind of like my movie. People go, man, the second, you know, you know the second movie, Fatter Documentary 2, it's even better. But the yeah. first movie's still the bigger movie. Yeah. It's funny it's how that works. Because you, know, well, this, you this, learn this, from the first one to the second yeah. one. That's why they're both, your movies and my books are both companion pieces, is how I say it. They are companion pieces. But to me, it represents where I was starting in my NSNG journey, the first book, and then things get a little more nuanced and fun in the second Absolutely. book. Yeah. You know what I mean? Same thing with the movies. So go check it all Thank out you. over there. Um, but, but, but I was supposed to talk about the vitamins in this show. I'll start doing that next week, folks. Oh, yeah, you need to start doing that. Yeah, yeah. I got into that whole conversation about Sanjay Gupta. And you know, th that, that shows how much I don't care about money. Um, folks. Go check out um, my, my, you know, you, you go to, uh, we all go to Amazon. Before you go to Amazon, go to vinnytotteries.com. Click through the banner. It helps support the show. It puts coal on the fire, gets my train down the track. We also have the super fan page. And I dutifully look at that every morning to see, I see your names and everything. Yeah. And I appreciate every single one of you for doing that. That money, none of it, none of it goes into my pocket. It all goes idea. to paying for this show. Go on, Anna. Let's say you find this work because your doctor says, oh, no, your A1C is a 8.2 or something, right? Mm -hmm. And then let's say you get that A1C down to 5.2. Right. Wouldn't it be cool if you gave 52 bucks to the super fan page? Wow. Because the free information helped you, I don't know, get rid it of your type 2 diabetes? Your life, Yeah. That well, would be a cool thing. Like it's, or let's say you lost seven pounds, you get thirty-seven bucks. No, no, hang on, hang on. We're selling ourselves. Five hundred. Five hundred. When you get to five point six, give us fifty-six dollars because that's right. That's right. actually the line. Yeah, that's the line. So that's four more dollars, Anna. Um, you're right. You're right. Yeah, you know, yeah. And look, um, what's her name? Uh, just sent me thirty-four dollars and twenty-something cents. You know, um, because she won King of Two Miles. You know, the girl that's one, you know, the, the shooter. Yeah. yeah. So we're doing another, we did another podcast with her. It just came oh, out. Good. I'm so glad. Oh. Yeah, She's she, the one who had to write me because she couldn't get through to you. Yeah. Lindsay, Lindsay Paul. Lindsay, that's right. Um, so go check all of that out. Do, 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 do. Wait, let me give a real quick shout out to one listener. Go on. Mar Mariano Reynoso called me yesterday. Okay. By the way, people freak out because I'm the customer service for my company. Yeah. And they're always shocked that I answer emails in a split second or phone calls. So he calls. I'm like, hi, it's Anna. And he's like, oh, he loves the sauce so much. He wanted to be able to order a case every three months, but that wasn't one of the options. Uh. And I set up for him. And he said, keep doing, it was just so nice to talk to people. He said, keep you and Vinny keep doing what you're doing. I buy everything that you guys do. I really appreciate it. And I'm happy to pay whatever prices you guys try, which I just thought was nice. It was just nice to hear that, like, we're having an effect and, and some, you know what I mean? And like, it's not like, oh, I lost the weight. Now I'm going to go away forever and just, 
not be a part. It's just nice to hear from the community and okay. also fun to be able to be like, oh my God, we have our first like recurring case. Like we're sending a case to somebody every three months. It was just nice. It made me happy. What did you say his first name was? Mariano. And where did I live with Serena? <gasps> How weird we can give is that? A, we can give out your address now. <laughs> yeah, because I'll live there. Mariano Street. Yeah, in Woodland Hills. We live in Mariano Street. Of course, watch me. I've said the wrong name. That's true. Remember, you know, remember Latisse Wing, who's been on the show? Did yeah. I tell you that I was calling, I kept calling her Patrice on an Instagram live. And, and, and then she's like, it's Latisse, lol. And I was like, oh my God, I know that. But I was saying Patrice. I was like, just call me Vinny. Well, look, I mean, I'm I finally got Vinny. Yeah, I got what's her name right tonight. Now I can't remember her name. I want to call it Leona. Leona. Leona is actually. Yeah, you did. You got it right. You didn't call her right. Lois. Yeah, I call her Lois. And or Lana. Lois and Lana. How's Lana doing? That poor girl. Um, I noticed she hasn't sent me any more music, so she's probably pissed. Um, anyway. <laughs> She'll never be pissed at you. She loves you. I love her too, man. God, she is. I'm going to see her this weekend in Vegas. I'm very excited to see her. Well, so this show will come out after I've already That's seen right. her. This I'm going to say she and I had a good time. That's what I'm going to say. All right. I need a picture of you two, like hugging each other, like hugging it yeah, out. Like, the girl, we're like, girlfriends. Besties. And mm -hmm. send me that text, please. Okay. Um, folks, on behalf of Anna Vocino, my name is Vinny Tortorich.